Have you ever thought about how every living thing, whether it's a plant, an animal, or even tiny bacteria, gets the energy it needs to survive? It's all connected. From the food we eat to the air we breathe, energy is constantly flowing through nature in an incredible cycle. But how does this happen? Where does it all start? Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of ecosystems to discover how energy moves from one organism to another and how food chains and food webs keep everything in balance. Ready to explore? Let's get started. A food chain is a sequence that shows how energy flows from one organism to another. The arrows indicate the direction of energy transfer, pointing from the source of the energy to its next destination. Let's take a closer look at a food chain in an ecosystem. It all starts with producers. Producers are the foundation of the food chain. They are living organisms like plants and algae that can make their own food. Using energy from the sun, producers convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose, sugar, through photosynthesis. This stored energy is what fuels the entire ecosystem. Primary consumers are the organisms that eat the producers. They're usually herbivores, meaning they only eat plants. These animals get their energy directly from the producers by consuming the glucose stored in plants. Secondary consumers are animals that eat the primary consumers. They can be carnivores, meaning they eat only meat, or omnivores, which eat both plants and animals. These animals rely on herbivores for their energy. At the top of the food chain are the tertiary consumers. These are the predators that eat the secondary consumers. They're often referred to as apex predators because they have few or no natural predators. Tertiary consumers usually rely on smaller carnivores or omnivores for energy. So, in a simple food chain, energy flows from the sun to the producers, then to the primary consumers, the herbivores, and up to the secondary and tertiary consumers, the carnivores or omnivores. So far, we've seen how energy flows through a simple food chain, from the sun, to the grass, to the rabbit, to the fox, and finally, to the hawk. But in nature, things are rarely this straightforward. Animals don't just rely on one food source, and plants don't only feed one kind of animal. This is where a food web comes in. Unlike a food chain, a food web shows how many different plants and animals are connected through various feeding relationships. Let's take a closer look at our example. While the rabbit eats grass, other animals like deer and insects eat it too. The hawk doesn't just hunt foxes. It might also catch a sparrow or a snake. These overlapping connections form a web of life where each organism plays a role in maintaining balance in the ecosystem. Let's explore how this works by adding more animals and feeding relationships to build a more complete food web. As you can see, the food web creates a complex, interconnected system where every plant and animal plays a part. It's a delicate balance. If one species is removed, it can affect the entire ecosystem. Understanding these connections helps us see how important each organism is, from the tiniest insect to the largest predator. Thanks for joining me on this journey through the food chain and food web. Next time you're outside, take a moment to observe how everything in nature is connected, working together to keep life in balance. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more exciting explorations of the natural world.